I'm Donna Vio from The Masquerade, and we're going to finish off our cathedral window quilt with another method. And it's just going to put a little bit of color behind the points on your uh, quilt. So we start off with four inch strips of batting and an eight and a half inch strip of fabric. That is the length of your the border side that you're going to do. So first we want to take our border and lay it out and on the wrong side of the border we want to take our four inch strip of batting and align it just a quarter of an inch from the edge and then we're going to stitch it down with some big um, loose basting stitches. You can do it by hand or you just use your longest stitch on your machine. It's going to hold it in place so that when you go to turn the border right side out the batting turns with it. If you have batting that is adhesive you can just do that instead. You don't have to tack it down. You can just iron it to the wrong side of your border. After you've tacked it down, you're going to take your border strip and you're going to fold it right sides together and it should fold so that the the batting is right near the edge of the fold and then you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch seam all the way down the strip and leave the both ends open. So here it is and it's tacked down. I used white thread so you could see it with big long stitches and um, they'll be easy to pull out when I'm all done. And when you get it turned right side out you can see that um, you can see your basting stitch down the middle of it. That can come out. You just pull that out real quick. And the seam is right on one edge, folds on the other. It's going to go under your quilt and you're going to make it so that the seam side is under and the fold side is away and at the edge. And you're going to match up your points to that folded edge. And you only want it about four inches off the edge. And I would suggest just quickly sewing along the edge of each of these points to hold it in place. And then in order to get the whole thing nice and stable without flopping on the back after you've taken out those basting stitches you can do a little motif free motion quilt a motif or just echo those points um, all the way another time and then maybe stitch on the curve another time and then that way it'll hold it nice and flat and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done So you can see where I started at the corner. Um, I, I folded my, my corner piece and I gave it a little crease so I could see right where the middle of the corner was. And that's where I started sewing my side seam. So now when I sew the next side on, I'm going to fold this back at a miter. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start from that fold and I'm going to attach the second side. So now that that's done, here's the back of the quilt and you can see the stitching on the points. And we're not going to want to see a seam back here. So in order to remove the batting, I'm going to clip this right along the seam where I had originally sewn it. So I can get in there and I can remove this batting on that diagonal. So I'm just going to cut that batting out. Okay, so I picked a couple of stitches away from that seam right near it till it gets to the corner on both pieces. And now it's free and I'm going to keep it folded in and I'm going to keep this side folded in and I'm going to match these up and I'm going to stitch along this diagonal line. So I'm, I'm going to, I've already stitched on this side right up to where it needs to be and I can't pull it away. So I know that's exactly the line that I need to stitch on and I need to do it from one corner to the other corner where they meet. So I'm going to chalk myself a line and then I'll stitch it.
then I can just hold those two center pieces together and bring it over to my machine and stitch. So you're going to want to stop that seam a quarter of an inch before you get to the outside corner so that you'll ha have enough fabric and you can roll down a quarter of an inch along the whole raw edge there and give it a press so that you don't have any raw edges at the corner. And then this is what the outside looks like, mitered. And now we're going to finish off the back so that we don't see any raw seams. So you know how I stitched right up to the edge there on both, on both sides? Well, I just pulled a couple stitches away on one of the sides so that I'll be able to tuck my raw edges in underneath it. So I'm going to trim that seam at about a quarter of an inch. I'm not measuring, it doesn't matter as long as it fits underneath there. And that gets tucked right in, nice and neat under there. Make sure that your, your end is folded in as it should be when you're tucking it. And then the other side is also going to be trimmed past the center at about a quarter of an inch. And that gets tucked as well. Like that. When you get it where you like it, you put a pin in and then you can either top stitch along that fold to hold it in place or blind stitch it either way. So I'm going to blind stitch this shut and um, then I'll free motion quilt around these little points inside here and you'll see what it looks like. So now that this is sewn, um, you can see where I picked away a few stitches here. I'm going to go over that one more time so that it's a straight line on the back and you don't see those stitches missing. And then I'm going to go ahead and stitch along the curves on my whole piece here. So I did some free motion quilting. I did a little bit different on each on each petal. Just to show there's a variety. And you can see it much better on the back because I used white thread. It could be very simple. It could be a simple little four petal flower. It could be a simple feather. It could be echoing and hearts. And then it gets a little more complicated, filling in backgrounds. So have fun with it. <laughs>